Hi everyone, welcome to my travel journal process number two. Uh, this is a travel journal that I'm doing uh, in relation to the fact that Beth from my from travel journal time is coming to Peru on her around the world in 80 days trip and it's a fiction fictitious trip. She's just doing it on for her practice and um, because she's coming to Peru I decided to document her Peru trip my way. So I'm just following through and uh, let's see how it goes. And um, I'm just enjoying the process and Beth has inspired me to, to do a travel general process also and I hope you like it. I will leave the link for Beth's channel down below as well as any other links that I mention or any other people that I mention during my process video. Thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll get started. So I kind of plan up my pages in advance so I know what images I'm going to be using and what how will my layout be. So um, basically each time I'll be doing a double page spread. Uh, this is going to be my Lima page spread and um, I printed some photos off the internet. Um, I This paper that I've got a strip from is a very old paper that I've had for years and I decided to use it. Uh, using one type of paper for each location or each place we go and now I'm I am ins inserting a clear tab which is a tab that is used in filing cabinets so I use that and I double sided tape to adhere the tab strongly to this paper strip here I, it's an image of this historic center of Lima a place that Beth wants to go it's part of her itinerary um, I cut the word Lima using the same paper and my di alpha, alpha die cuts. Um, I like to do this to have uh, uh, the main name destination in die cuts. Uh, now I'm currently stamping, uh, uh, stamping out the word historic center. Uh, even though stamps are supposed to be bold, um, it's giving a kind of distressed look and I kind of like it so I'm not bothered about it. I'm using archival a, a, a ink and I'm not worried about bleed through or shadowing because the paper has been treated with twinkling H2O so it kind of gives it a protective layer so there is no bleed through to the next page with this ink. Um, I'm stamping here and there as well so I'm doing the same thing getting a strip that can paste it on the other side to hide the staple pin and cover the excess stud that we can see. I'm um, trying to save some of the scraps and use it here and there. Now um, this is a picture of a place called a restaurant in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it seems that Beth wanted to see the Pacific Ocean and uh, this restaurant is in the Pacific Ocean so it, it came out perfect that uh, the itinerary that Beth wanted to do is what I did for this page. So this is a restaurant in the Pacific Ocean and Beth really loved it and she had great food there. And uh, so I am did some pictures and left some space for to, to write down certain uh, what we what we went through and what we did. So I will not bo uh, uh, write down what we did on camera, did off camera, but just wanted to show the process. Here is so a tag which I made with watercolor paper and I covered the one side of it with the with the paper so um, um, I like that and here I'm creating a pocket so I can put my postcard and my tag in it. This is one thing I do every time if on a real trip It's always I buy postcards and I send it to myself to my current address so that way I have a memory of the place I have been uh, with me all the time with the postage stamp with the postage stamp mark of the country which I was in so it's quite a good way for me to document that and I really like it so I'm creating a pocket here with the same paper to have some sort of uh, coordination going on with at least one thing I kind of I like this this format and I something I really love to do and I stick to it almost every time and you will see this format throughout this general process So there's a postcard uh, where I'll be inserting some things. Here I'm putting in some circles which is known as Zen circles to Beth. So Beth, there you go, a touch of yours, of your method here. Um, I found this photo of Miraflores, it's one of the sub suburbs in Lima. 
which faces the Pacific Ocean. It's on a cliff and um, it's a beautiful place and you can see the sunset quite clearly from the cliff uh, in the evenings when there is, when you can see the sun and it's not cloudy because six months of the year is quite, quite cloudy in Miraflores. This is the second, uh, the second part of the double page spread of Lima, which is the Museo Larco. It's a private museum where um, they house a great collection of pre-Inca artifacts and Beth really loved it there uh, because of the collection of artifacts and uh, materials but also the building. The building is covered with bougainvilleas and she was really crazy about it and she was taking pictures and trying to see how she can incorporate that into her quilting and all those things so she really loved it and she loved that sort of uh, uh, record keeping that they kept using knots on a string of thread which you can see in the image in the middle and she really loved it. So now I'm going through my stamps and trying to find some stamps to go along uh, to mimic a bit of the book and feel that was on the walls. So that's what I'm stamping out through. Um, this is a Juan Soles coin of uh, Peru which has a, a Lima imprint on it. So the Peruvian government released coins for different regions of Peru and so I had access of this and I put it here. Oops, I nearly burnt my page. I was trying to weld some max, melt some wax and it caught fire so be careful. I liked, I decided to do some wax, uh, some wax seals on the page. So this is my double page of Lima. Then we took a day trip to Nazca. So for the Nazca page is again a double page spread and uh, I am decided to try some perfect fills here, so I am using a stencil and perfect medium to uh, imprint some patterns and then use uh, bronze perfect fill to brush uh, the powder through and get the design. This design reminds me of Nazca which is known to have lots of geometric patterns and lines and arrows, so that's what I am doing here, using different stencils uh, from Tim Holtz, from high swap and from dilution, uh, dilution stencils to get different patterns which sort of resemble Nazca lines and uh, do that using perfect pearls and uh, follow the method of how to uh, uh, how to what? how to get the patterns of using perfect pearls and how to bind them and all those things and all the different processes of it um, and I'm quite happy that I've got to use some of my old stamps that I've forgotten I had like this barcode stamp which I'm using and the border stamp that I'm using is a part of an old recollection set uh, which might be available in Michael's I'm not quite sure about it but you could go and see if they still have it but they still have they have new patterns there as well trying to use up all the medium uh, on the stencil the po both the positive and the negative side of the medium of the stencil. Um, now I'm removing any all the excess perfect pearls that might have remained even though I brushed it off and cleaning my desk space because I don't want them everywhere. And now I'm spraying it with water to activate the binding agent in the perfect pearls so that it uh, uh, binds up correctly. Here I'm using a paper. I know it represents a original print but that's the only thing I had closest to Nazca, to represent Nazca with the brown earthy tones. So that's what I'm doing here. So as you can see I'm following the same pattern of having a strip and strip on somewhere on the on the paper. Here yeah, I have another postcard from Nazca and um, getting a side pocket on the one side to house the postcard and also the tag. The tag was again the same method. Uh, at one side is quarter color paper and the other side I just covered the tag with the same paper I used to create the pocket. And then I used the same paper also to die cut the word uh, Nazca. So 
this um, the page is done for the for the left hand side the right hand side I'm adding more stripes to the page having a struggle with the double-sided tape I need to get some fingernails to remove the double-sided tape Using using some die cuts which were found which are my stash. Here I wanted to use some wax again. And then I remembered that I wanted to do a small cluster at the bottom, so found some old doily and an old library card. Kind of reminded me of Nazca in a way, so I used those to stick there and then some wax. So I'm following what something that Beth does is Beth like to have likes to have a constant in all her pages so my constant is wax and the strips of paper so that's what I'm doing here putting some wax and then having some scattered dots here and there to give it a so-called vintage vintage feel to it cutting off all the excess bit Here I'm showing you a watercolor where I tried to do a, um, a tree design. Unfortunately, it did not work out, so we'll see how it goes if I do another one. Here I have the paper of the market. I mean, when Beth went to the local craft market here, she was so excited. I mean, she re literally shouted uh, when she saw the different fabrics. If you don't know, Beth likes half of Beth is travel, the other half is quilting. And when she saw the patterns over here, oh, let's just say her creative juices went all over the place. Lucky we did not have a sewing machine with her. If not, she would have started quilting right there and then. So this page is dedicated to the craft market in Lima. Um, so um, I created the, uh, a standard market one because we went to two markets while we were in Lima. Uh, and I printed out some photos of the different craft area craft markets in Lima and uh, I'm putting them here and there uh, the tag is made from a paper that I printed off the internet and uh, it's the same thing there is the image on one side and the other side of watercolor paper where I'll, we can journal what happened what happened and uh, thoughts and thoughts thoughts of thoughts and whatever ideas we've had. Uh, for this particular page spread, instead of having a strip of paper, I decided to use the washi tape which had cameras on it because it's a place to capture the perfect image of Lima and the wonderful colors that you find in this particular place. So there was cameras everywhere and taking photos and trying to fill up your eyes with the different colors that you see in the market area here. Doing some more pasting of the different fabric images. And my devil best spread for the market is done. And before I uh, finish this, I'm going to put in some waxes, wax drops again. It was a great idea to, for me to use some wax drops because this wax I have had for so long now, I've hardly used it and this was a great time for me to find my waxes and, and use them on this page. It was really a wonderful feel to have this wax. Unfortunately, it doesn't stick a lot to some, some pages, but I don't mind it. Now we went to the second market, which was the fresh produce market. And again, Beth really loved it. She the 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 different kinds of fruits that she saw, the different types of maize, I mean, not just yellow maize, white, purple, orange, marble effect maize. All those she really loved it. She loved loved quinoa that she saw here, and the fruits and the vegetables. She was just overwhelmed, and she loved it. So a page we created for the marketplaces. Um, I just pasted the images of it and then I'm playing with wax, putting some wax drops here and here I decided to do a double wax with uh, bronze and silver and it came out quite good and now I'm putting some more wax here and there. 
uh, I decided to brighten the heart impression of the wax using some uh, ink. I found two coins, one of uh, Coco Paws and one of Quinoa, which I used over here. Uh, this is the first part of my travel journal process. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below and I will reply to you. I hope you like it uh, and uh, I will come back tomorrow with some more travel journal process for the second part of our trip here in Peru. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy it and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.